Hey everybody, it's the interview queen Alicia Toot here and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to my interview with Jesse Alaban. Hello. Hello and Hi. thank you for saying my name right. Oh, uh, not very course. many people get that correctly, so <laughs> kudos to you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Now I have to ask, I mean, how's your day been? What's going on over there? I'm just so pumped to have you on. Oh, thank you. I'm actually really thrilled to be here. This is the first interview I've had uh, in quite some time. So I'm nervous and excited and of course, delighted to be here. So my day is going really well. Uh, lately, I've been getting up and becoming like this breakfast aficionado in the kitchen uh, during my time, uh, just kind of chilling out. I dove into breakfast cooking. So I love making omelets. Today I made uh, me and my boo some eggs in a basket. It's, uh, oh. do you know what? Basket oh, I or? do. That sounds oh. so good right now. <laughs> it's so good. It's just like, okay. So for those of you guys that don't know what it is, it's basically, you get a piece of toast, right. And like you cut a hole or just like pinch the hole out of the middle, yeah, put it in the pan, crack an egg in it and let it cook. And then you flip it just like you would cook an egg. So, and then you top it with whatever you want. That's so literally my favorite way to eat eggs. My poppy used to make them for me and he'd call them an egg in the middle. And I've been obsessed with them since I was a kid. So I love always hearing the different names people come up, <laughs> come up with for it. <laughs> That's so sweet. It's like, it's so easy because you just pick it up like toast and right. it's done. And it's like you top it with other things, but yeah, it's delicious. I love hearing that you've been diving into a bunch of other things. And I also noticed how much you've posted about coffee and late night bites. Like you'll be tweeting at 2 a.m., uh, 5 a.m. and you're eating something delicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my schedule is kind of all over the place, but I actually enjoy it. I think um, for the first time in a really long time, I've been able to, and I'm really blessed to be able to do this, but sit down and just kind of figure out and go towards the things that I want to do and the things that I like. And something I learned lately is like, you know what, like, I kind of like this crazy schedule because it helps yes. uh, me be more creative and stuff like on um I'm caged, if you will. Like, uh, I like working on art, like in crazy hours of the night. I don't know why or what it is. It's always been like that. Like, I just feel like my creative juices are either sure. really good at like 3 a.m. I don't know why, but it's just, it's there and I just feel free and everything is also just quiet. So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, just the stillness, everything all vibey and stuff. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever gotten into any art or anything creative like that, but yeah, I just, uh, kind of enjoy doing weird things at different hours so oh, no I'm the same way like it's less of an artwork in terms of drawing and painting but for me I love writing lyrics and poetry so it's like it'll be 2 a.m 3 a.m and then you just get this weird burst of creativity and you can't let it go like you have to hold on to it so you have to act on it at that kind of crazy hour in the morning so I completely relate Ooh, what do you like to write about? I love poetry. Oh, pretty much anything that happens to be bothering me or just like I'll literally be walking down the street and I'll see something happen. Or I'll see like a really cute interaction. It's the most random thing that can spark inspiration. So that's like the most hippie thing I think I've said in a minute. But <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great because it's kind of like once you feel it, like you have to hang on to that. And I feel like as a, a performer, an artist, it's like you have to live in that and like, mm -hmm. like, and just go and stuff. Like, don't even question it. Go, don't go with like any second thought about it. Like, ah, oh, I respect That's, that. Oh, I'm the same with you. Oh, thanks. Uh, I was always one of those, like, okay. So like for inspiration, creativity, I know you have a, you're doing your podcast and I just saw you at a convention recently. Yes. Um, I don't I, I, I'm just curious, like, is there anything for you that prompted you to do that? Like a childhood experience? When it comes to the interview, this is hilarious. Look how the tables have turned. <laughs> I just say, like, I'm sorry. I'm just like, I, I love people. No, I, love I love learning it. about them. And like, no. That's why I do this. Like I'm the exact same way, but uh, growing up, I was actually such an introvert. Like I hated doing anything that had to do with public speaking or class presentations, group projects. And then it got to the point where I saw a band perform here in Toronto with my dad and my sister. And we had this really crappy camera and my dad was kind of like, why don't you go ask the band a couple of questions? You know so much about them. And I literally went up to them, asked them some questions, posted it on YouTube and people started to watch. And then my love of learning about people and researching and kind of being like that investigator, I just, I just loved it. So it was a combination between enjoying learning about people, wanting to be a PI when I was younger, <laughs> and uh, just <laughs> loving music and wrestling. So it was super weird. Yeah. It fell in my lap and now I'm here. So crazy. <laughs>
Oh, I love it. It's what you wanted to do. Like something that um, I listened to a Rick Rubin, uh, Rick Rubin interview uh, mm -hmm. recently and something that really like something I've clung on to is he's like, I've always done what I wanted to do. Yes. And it's just like, oh man, like that just hit such a light bulb and stuff because I feel like with, with my path and stuff with my parents, it was like, they have, they, here's the plan. You go to school, you get a scholarship in sports, you get your degree and then you get your job with your degree. Yeah. And it was like, okay, like I'm doing this because I'm supposed to be doing this. And yes, I'm, I'm investing in things that I, I am interested in, but I never really felt like this crazy passion. Like my, um, my background is in behavioral science and marketing and like, that's fun. Like I, I really enjoy that, especially with like the psychology part, like, Oh, how do you, how do you work? Like what's yeah. going on in there? I love that part. And then it kind of helps you determine, uh, for me, what I, uh, sorry, I'm like jumping all over the place, but no, with that fine. part of it, it's, um, sorry. Uh, it's, it's like, once you realize how people tick, like that's, that's where the creation into making stories and plots go. And that's why I love poetry and I love writing. I've been doing a lot of writing lately for like this hopefully really big project. Uh, I know it's going to take some time. Um, but anyway, like that's, that's what I'm doing now with it. But beforehand it was like, okay, then you get marketing and then you do this. And it's just like, okay, I would totally sync on interviews because it's like, ah, I'm doing this because I'm supposed to and stuff. Yeah, and it's sure. just like, these big like marketing agencies and like they they're just seeing right through me and they're like you don't really want to do this and I'm like okay so now that I've had that experience and then being introduced with like wrestling and storytelling and creation it's just like okay this is what I want to do I had the time to work on it and I just I just can't wait to see it all come together it's going to take a while I don't really want to give anything else away I wasn't supposed <laughs> to say anything about it I was like don't talk about this stuff don't talk about your next moves uh but anyways um yeah that's where the creation part and excitement and like just go towards that because that's what you want to do and I love that with your interviews and stuff when you were so young you were just like this just feels right so. It's honestly one of those moments where it doesn't even hit you. It kind of like gradually sinks in and you realize, oh my gosh, I think this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> You'll just come across it randomly. And then it just is like, oh, things make sense now. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I wish, like, I kind of wish like that was preached a little bit more in Me schools too. and stuff. Like, I don't really know too much about what's going on in like schools too much these days, but I heard that um, I did like this little Twitter uh, post, like, months months ago and I was like hey how's the art program going on in your state and like a lot of states don't have it and it's just like man like that that creation the creative writing like all of that I'm like that is so important because like if you can't express then who are you right yep. A hundred percent. And that's kind of the beauty of what we do. Like it allows for like as much expression as you could possibly want. Even when it comes to interviews like this, you know, being the host of it and the owner of my site, like I have full control over whatever we're going to end up talking about. And you of course can say whatever you want. Like it's just, it's just the freedom of what we get to do. If this was a interview hosted by somebody else or somebody who fed me questions prior, you know, it'd just be so weird and unnatural. And that's why I love being able to do it this way. So yeah, completely get where you're coming from. Yes. 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 <laughs> I love Happy it. No, it's so awesome speaking with somebody who has so many different passions and wears so many different hats. And it's great you brought up your artwork, actually, because I wanted to. Uh, did you really almost cut your finger off using a power tool recently? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I posted about that. So um, I was working on a bunch of pieces and it's kind of like a, it's kind of like whenever you're overworking yourself on the same thing or when you work out and you're fatigued, you get a little mm -hmm. like, mm, but you're like, get it done. And yeah, so I was working with this jigsaw and it's like my favorite power tool because it cuts stuff. I, I don't know. It cuts stuff. It's great. It's I don't know. I, it just reminds me of like this one dream I had and stuff. It's kind of gory, but it was very, it was cool. Anyways, uh, yeah, so I almost cut my finger off. I was making a frame for a, a friend for a commission piece. And the thing about it was when I went across it and stuff, I was just so determined to get like the piece of wood cut that I totally like, I was just like, no. okay, it's get, it skimmed the edge of my finger. And the thing that was kind of scary about it is that I didn't feel anything. And then I saw blood and I was like, oh, well, that's oh. not good. So it's well, that happened. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just lucky to have all of my fingers are good. Gonna keep on creating. Um, and then also not use a jigsaw when I'm tired. Tired. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a note that everyone should take, <laughs> not just us two, but also the fans watching for sure. 
<laughs> don't operate when you're tired or like, yeah, I felt like I, I was in such a zone though. It was like, again, one of like those creative things where you're like, oh, I'm yeah. at it, but you're whatever. Just doing like, 10 things at once, you know? <laughs> yeah. I feel like, uh, with managing my time, like that's been a new challenge for sure to like mm-hmm. allow those things that I'm interested in to, um, be a little bit more prevalent in my life, like with the art and stuff it's like okay so I have this body of work that I'm working on for me because it's what I like and what I want to do and it's just like again with the expression and then okay I have these commission pieces that I need to work on that are like okay like how how much time should I spend on them and then like the rate and like keeping those promises and then um also I'm interested in uh building uh uh, I've never say this, um, acting, uh, it's something I've always wanted to do. And now it's like, okay, what are the things that I need to work on? So it's like doing, doing exercises, doing monologues, memorizing, getting feedback, um, making those appointments. And then again, with, uh, the writing projects that I have. So all of it is a lot of time management. I think things that keep me motivated are, um, do you want to eat? Yeah, I do want to eat. <laughs> Good motivation um, right there. Want... <laughs> yeah, and I kind of feel like I have this opportunity to to again like grow and build build the things that I want to do and in some ways it kind of feels like um like a second chance mm-hmm. in a way or like another opportunity to really do that especially now that I have the time and energy. So it's like okay, like what is the dream that I want? Uh yes, I still want to be like uh, in, in the public eye for being a creator and entertainer for like many different things. And then I keep thinking about, um, the future that I want in like five or 10 years. And it's something that I haven't done in a while. Like I was just sort of, um, got this amazing opportunity with WWE. I was like, this is it. I'm diving in, uh, the system changed. Okay. Time to adapt and change on to the next thing. I got some, it's like, I didn't walk away empty handed. Like I got amazing friendships. I got, and experience. I got to see how like a big production works. So that in itself was like another full on education. And now it's like, okay, what do we want to apply? What do I love? Who are the people I want to work with? And it's just all feeling really good. So when I see myself in like the next five or 10 years, it's going to be, um, I'm still going to be busting my butt, like working oh, hard, yeah. <laughs> uh, being dedicated and to continuing to grow and meet like other amazing people in the industry. Um, not just with wrestling, but with like media, entertainment, literature, um, art. Um, I see some things in maybe a museum sometime. Um, I'm definitely Ooh. still doing things, um, with give kids the world. Uh, I like, I just want to, it's not just like contributing uh, my goals, like just for myself, but as long as I'm being a contributing member of society and passing that on too. So it's like, okay. warm fuzzies, <laughs> warm fuzzies that's empowerment so, for everybody. So lovely. No, it's one of those things where sometimes people are so scared to look ahead because they have no idea what's coming, what's going to change. But I feel like all of us have been through so much change the last couple of years to the point where it's like, screw it. Like we're only here once, do what you fucking love and I just think that's amazing that uh, you've really channeled that especially um through everything that you kind of went through you know I I love looking at life in chapters like WWE was a chapter in your life like you mentioned and now you're on to the next Uh, so I was really curious though is wrestling a focus for you now are you just taking time to focus on all these other fantastic passions I mean you're being an entertainer and creator regardless of where you end up Okay. That's, uh, that's definitely something I know a lot of people on Twitter and like Instagram, social media, like fans have been asking, like, when are you going to wrestle again? And I did put like a little something on my story. Like, no, I'm not done. And like, I'm very excited to check out the independent scene. It's, uh, somebody who, who didn't really know that much about wrestling and did like the homegrown thing. I don't know what the other thing is, but it was like, that was my only exposure to wrestling and having other, uh, like colleagues come in and have them tell me about their experiences with it. It's just like this whole new world that seems like an adventure to me. Um, if I was going to look forward to any matches, I'm really excited about my first match. I kind of, I don't want it to be against anybody I know. Like that seems like such a, an interesting experience to me because I had like the kind of what I'm told was a luxury of like you train with the people all the time, like with the same people all the time. And I think 
like for me, not really knowing that it was at the time and stuff and still appreciating like all of the hard work everyone puts in, like to be able to perform and do everything that uh, WWE called for. Like it's, it's a high caliber of talent and stuff. So I have a lot of respect for the women there, but I'm also excited to meet other women and other competitors. Of course. Um, scene. No idea where that's going to take place at first, but once it happens, I will happily announce that. And um, it's, I still feel like it's something that I want to explore. Definitely. Well, hearing how driven you are towards everything else that you do, to me, it only made sense, you know, that you would want to continue doing something in wrestling, no matter where it is. Um, it was really interesting to me, too, because, of course, the world got to watch you blossom in WWE from the great matches. It looked like you had such a good time with the whole uh, Taya and Robert storyline. So um, just one more question to technically about being there. Just how was that dynamic and being able to stir the pot and kind of take on that really cheeky persona that you had? So I feel like uh, with my evolution as a character, I uh, personally, so when I first got there, it was this like Jesse show, like really bubbly, like kind of uh, like really happy and joyous about life, like in no matter like what situation and that that character was super fun to play like I but at the time while I was doing it everything was so new I didn't understand fully what I was doing Mm -hmm. um I was just kind of like thrown in and it it was it was an experience it was fun I kind of miss playing a role like that just because uh I was smiling all the time. So it's like, I know that just comes more naturally to me. But then when I was like, okay, listen, like I need to understand what, um, what it means to be a heel and be, and be pissed off all the time, because it's something that naturally wasn't there for me. And I was like, I like, as, uh, the actress, the actress in me was just like, you need to experience everything. You need to understand, you need to feel. And so when I went in that direction, it was kind of, well, at first, very awkward because I was like, this is so new. I, I don't, I have no instincts to like go out and kick somebody's ass or whatever. Like I'm more of like the, you want to talk about it? Hmm? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and yeah, so like kind of bringing that side out of me was uh, very, very, uh, what's another word for like rich? I just felt like I got a completely new education mm-hmm. for like how to just in the feelings of ang- anger and rage, because normally again, like naturally for me, it was just like the person that I am, like won't, won't act on those feelings because, you know, as a kid, you kind of learn as you grow, like you, you get, there's consequences and then you kind of look goofy. For so sure. <laughs> it was like allowing that to come out and feel and be in that moment. And then transitioning into like, okay, well, like, we'll keep you here as heel for now. And then uh, we'll put you in different groups, get some different tag experience. And I think out of all of that, um, from wrestling, sorry about that beep, um, wrestling from Oh my gosh, sorry. Your high demand is fine. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's coming up on the screen or not. Anyways, got volleyball plants later today. But transition. Okay. Yeah. Singles to tag. So with my uh, whole experience from going there and then going into the Robert Stone brand, I learned to really enjoy uh, teamwork with the tag, but still like, okay, it's my turn to kick butt and like put some heat on this. (laughs) Why is it so fun to be mean? (laughs) Yeah. I think it's because, okay. To answer that, I feel like it's like you get to be naughty in front of people and mm-hmm. you don't really an get excuse. there's no there's consequence ex- <laughs> exactly that's exactly what I was gonna say it's just like oh okay and like you get you get praise for it okay yeah. um but yeah I think uh like whatever booking happens next um I think I just want to free play with it I don't know if it's like free play I'm still figuring out what I want it to be to be mm-hmm. completely honest because it's such a a new thing so right now it's just just dipping my toes in and be like hey what's up but <laughs> you like play with it all, you can form it it's like a new yeah, piece but, of play <laughs> exactly and I feel like most of all like the biggest like lesson that I learned I mean I, I thought I understood what it meant to have fun going into WWE but like after now that it's like this new chapter it's like oh 
I don't have even more fun. So yes. <laughs> let's bring that up. That's incredible. Uh, well, the last thing I wanted to ask you about, Jesse is the fact that you actually design and make your very own outfits and your fashion seriously reminds me so much of my own. So I want to know, do you kind of have a dream gear in mind, like the ultimate main event headline badass outfit? Yeah, I'm making it right now. Are you? I don't want to show it. Like, I think once that opens too, like, I obviously I like doing stuff with like creating with my hands. Like, I'm very, uh, what is it called? Kinetic learner too. Mm -hmm. And stuff. I like just like when you brought up clay and like mold, and it's just, uh, it's exciting. So, I actually have this one piece of gear right here. I wore it and I made it, and I never like, took the time to post about it but I wish I should have but it's this one set of gear that like my sister's into alcohol ink Ooh. so what she did um basically so it's cool. kind of, thank you it's kind of like this form of watercolor and alcohol and like the way um I guess once you put layer the liquids, it runs a certain way and there's metallic. So like this piece of gear was actually really special to me because um she made this one art piece here <laughs> it's in the other room sorry um <laughs> and I was like oh I just really want to collaborate and make this stuff but like making making clothing and stuff it's such a different artwork because it's like you have to be an architect like you have to understand like the layers and then you have to like keep your cool when like the sewing machine doesn't do what you want it to do and like the stitch I'd be screwed <laughs> yeah it's so like well I think the reason why it wasn't wasn't so intimidating to me to start was because when I was little my grandma was like always on the sewing machine she would make some of my clothes she would make quilts and it was just it was there I was like oh okay like this is this is the thing Mm -hmm. you know so I think just having that exposure to that and like being a like a person that is fiercely independent and wanting to be able to do everything myself um I was like you know what like sometimes I need gear tomorrow and stuff sometimes I need gear at a weekend like granted a lot of the gear makers have like crazy schedules and a lot of clients so I was like okay like how can I how can I take more control of this so that was part of the motivation behind that too. That's incredible. I just want to say like before signing off, it's been so cool being able to learn more about you. And of course, we've been able to kind of watch the wrestling for ourselves and be able to fall in love with that on our own. But I always love these types of interviews just to get to know the people and their passions more. So uh, just thank you so much for taking the time to come on. You're awesome. I'm really glad we got to do this. Oh, thank you so much, Alicia. You're awesome too. I'm really happy I met you and I look forward to more of your interviews. Oh, thank you so much. Hopefully we'll be able to do a round two in the near future. Now to everybody watching, this has been the absolutely lovely Jesse Ella Band. Be sure to check out AliciaTube.com for plenty more exclusive interviews and features. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.